What's up, Fresh White Tea Crew? Felipe here with another episode of Starters. In today's episode of Product Developer Reacts, Joe Rogan. Spotify. I know everyone watches the Roganator. And uh, there was an episode that I watched um, that I should have reacted to right when it came out, but it got me as a product developer. And I think it's super interesting when you're thinking about products and how they affect people. <laughs> the Joe Rogan experience. You were talking about the changes in human diet and eating soft foods and how it affects the way the jaw develops and the, the size of the jaw. Take an ancient skull, anything older than 500 years old, 5,000 years old, 50,000 years old you're going to see, by and large, about 99% chance these skulls are going to have perfectly straight teeth. They never had their wisdom teeth removed. They never had braces, any orthodonture, anything. They had straight teeth. If you start getting into the modern era of industrialized food, mouths start shrinking. So why do we have crooked teeth? Not from genetics. It's because our mouths have grown so small that the teeth have nowhere to go. So they grow Whoa. crooked. And what else happens when you have a mouth that's too small for its teeth? You have a smaller airway. We had perfect teeth. It was the invention of other foods and other things <laughs> that screwed us up. Our mouth was in tune to be just fine. So it's the technology and shifts in our purchasing patterns that altered our body and the way those, these issues that we have in our face, right? So really as people who develop products, you gotta think about history. You got to find these patterns. And I think those are the interesting things to ask. When we introduce new technologies, how is it shifting the change in people? How is it shifting buying patterns? How might this affect people later down the line? I know we're seeing a lot of that with tech right now, but think about it in this sense, a very real sentiment here is that food has screwed us up. So some, some bulldogs do because they've been bred to have right. this flat face, just like humans. Yeah. But, but animals in the wild have straight teeth, and, and we did too. As a species, we, we have straight teeth. But, um, but because of industrialization, specifically because of food, our mouths have grown too small. Look what he said there. We had straight teeth. And because of industrialization, a great thing that brought lots of radical change into our life happened for the positive. But again, at that time, we couldn't see a lot of these problems that was happening through the creation of these new faster foods and ways to eat more efficiently. Hello, cereal people. Kellogg's, have you heard that name? Yeah, he's kind of responsible for messing up your mouth. Rub your finger right here. Whatever phone you probably hold your, your, finger, your phone in, don't you notice there's a little dent there now? The earliest thing too, when you started writing, you probably noticed the little bunion on your finger from holding a pencil. So those little things, how are we finding that when we interact with these products, the products are indeed affecting us and leaving change behind? So those little things are the things that I like to notice and kind of seem like, huh, that product's kind of shifted how people interact. But again, he said we had straight teeth before. It was technology that ruined it. Makes sense. You would never believe that. Like if someone told me that other than reading your book and, and kind of understanding where you're where you're coming from, I would think this is nonsense. It's genetics. Yeah. Just like when, why people have small hands or people have big feet or whatever. Well, it's become a heritable trait. So so what's happened now is they've found, the researchers who, who've, who've done this, Robert Corcini worked on this stuff for 30 years, his 250 scientific papers on it. They found within the first generation of switching to industrialized foods, about 50% of the population is going to have malocclusion which means a crooked jaw, crooked teeth. After that, about 60 to 70 percent, next generation. After that, about 80 percent. After that, look around. That's us now, about 90 percent. Jesus. So if, if... Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> decade after decade, we're getting worse. So all these foods in the grocery store, when you're buying this bar that's in a snack food bar that's mushed up yogurt, yogurt, uh, smoothies, um, you know, drinkable meals, slim fast, whatever. Just the lack of chewing. <laughs> the less we chew, the more we're 
creating these problems all around our ear, nose, and throat and shifting the dynamics of how all of this works because we're not chewing raw pieces of meat no more. Anyways, but yeah, <laughs> you see what I mean? Like we're, we're constantly responding to this and our body is reacting and changing and shifting due to what's happening with technology and happening in time. So because of that, we just, you know what I mean? Like, what is that going to mean to our teeth? Do they get smaller and smaller and smaller and they almost become unnecessary? Just think about like birds and other things that evolved in history. Why things go extinct and evolve and change and shift and adapt. Again, I have no clue what that means to our physical body itself and all the parts that we're accustomed to. But this kind of rate of change, when I think about what is happening in the future, makes me think that the body can possibly shift and that you know, hundreds of years from now, I'm, I'm not saying we will adopt to have fins and swim in the ocean, but we got to look at it in some sense to, to really understand that. Does that mean our body will shift or there's, are there things we have to correct through product development itself to kind of bring it back to where it used to be? I'm not sure, but it, there's a whole lot of interesting stuff there when you think about the dynamics of what patterns we'll find 10, 15, 20 years from now, what that means to products we're developing now. Um, and again, just kind of knowing that when we look back in 50 years, 20 years, 30 years, What's that case study that they're gonna write when they said like, hey, we had no clue the phone was gonna change this or do this to our eyes or do this to the patterns of how we chew, eat, breathe, sleep, and this stuff. Those are the patterns I like to find. And I like when, when I see those things because it makes me wonder about the future and what products are gonna affect people in which ways and maybe how I could contribute to that in very positive ways. No, I was going to put me on no, a little ahead, more. Ahead, so, so there, uh, Dr. Kevin Boyd is now doing studies where he's looking at fetuses in the womb and is seeing their mouth size is too small and they have this backward slant to their faces, just like I have, just like so many people in the population have. If you were to measure a skull and you were to draw one line from its ear to its nose and another line perpendicular to that, almost every single ancient skull would be above that line. Very powerful jaw. Now, 90% of modern skulls are below it. So they are behind it. So, and this is happening now, it is becoming a heritable trait. So, so kids are, are messed up to, to begin with, which is why so many kids are have sleep apnea and snore now, which is so injurious to. All right, not a personal plug here. Kind of could sound like one for an instance, but, um... You know, that means chewing and masticating and like I said earlier, is very important to development. So you can see why people are buying all those weird, stupid products where you chew on a rubber ball and yeah, jaw X or jaws workouts and stuff like that. In high school, I chewed on mad pounds of gummy bears, mad pounds of gummy bears, gum all day. So that's probably, hopefully that contributed some positive stuff. I even have a gummy bear tattoo right there on the arm. That's how much I love it. I was chewing on carnauba wax all day. So maybe not a bad thing when I think about kind of what, how that affects stuff. But again, people are growing up with weaker jaws. Maybe that means parents, give yourself, give your kids a lot of gum. Let them chew on a rubber ball all day. I mean, don't sue me for that. I don't want to choke on it. What I'm saying is, seems that being like a cow in some sense of constantly chewing is not necessarily a bad thing when you think, when you think about keeping things in line. And this came about because they weren't chewing tougher food. They didn't need the muscles. And what can be done to sort of reverse that or mitigate that? In adulthood, it's harder. And, and for kids, it's much easier because their muscles are, and their bones are much more malleable. But that's exactly what they found is once you introduce, we used to chew for about four hours a day. We used to chew for four hours a day. Everyone probably has a blender in their kitchen. <laughs> No chewing, right? So obviously that's ruining things. So I guess practice chewing, get some gum, right? Give your kids mad packs of gum. Let them chew all day. Give them the most rubbery chicken you've ever given them. Make them chew till they chew no more. Sounds like a band, chew no more. Back to the Rogan. That's just how it was from the dawn of time to, to about 500 years ago, but as wheat started getting processed into white flour as rice became we started taking the, the germ and the bran away from rice so it's just the polished seed as things began to get canned and bottled if you think about even what's considered healthy food right now smoothies avocado oatmeal 
Mm -hmm. All of this stuff is soft. Mush. Powerful. Yeah, see, Joe, look at the word Joe Rogan said. Mush. Mush. That's exactly what's happening. Everything they're reading is just turning into some mushy, easy thing that you drink through some 10-foot boba straw, right? And then no chewing, right? So obviously this, this is shifting everything. We're a convenience. We're a convenience kind of people now. Fast, 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 go, 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 food. I want it now, I want it now, I want it now, right? That's obviously shifted a lot of stuff for people and uh, how they, the things they want to buy and the things they need. So that is crazy. Uh, chew on, go chew on a rock. Go chew on a rock, people. Get a rock, put that rock in your mouth and ah, chew it. Bars. So in, in adulthood, there you can make some changes and that that's what i i tried to do in my own face as as a uh, experiment uh for kids what they're finding is these problems need to be diagnosed very early and they need to be treated and what they do is they widen the mouth to the way that they were supposed to be 500 years ago so we're changing our bodies by by force of will to the way that the nature had made them all right so he keeps talking about getting better at breathing Obviously, the root of the issue, Kellogg's, blender, protein just shakes. All day. Just stay in the song. You know who the problems are. Do what you gotta do. You know who the issue is. <laughs> <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen. So I think that kind of wraps it up. It's really crazy again when you're thinking about products and how they're shifting our bodies, changing us. I encourage you to check things out look around, I don't want to say check out your body and see how it's changing. You should know your body. You should check it out and see what it's made of <laughs> and how you like to use yours. But uh, <laughs> yeah, don't forget to do all the things you're supposed to and like, share, and subscribe. Press that button. No. Anyways, I know. Uh, my name was Philip Gonzalez. I hope you liked that spasm. I will be back next week. Enjoy. This was Stargist and uh, love products. Make them, enjoy them, launch them. See what you learn. Question everything. Bye bye.